Oh. Yeah. Mm, mm, uh, uh, zap, zap, zap. Lasso. Running. Ring. Punch. Kick. Ah. That's literally been in my head all day. Let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 61 of A Brew With You. I'm one of your hosts, Blake Mickle, accompanied by the matchmaker himself, Danny Brahas. I would pair together... Benedict Cumberbatch and Tilda Swinton. Mm. Already been done. Mm. Damn it, Marvel. That would be like a super again. magician. They'd have a super magician kid. You think they would have like those two good, like those two good great beings would come together and then form like an evil child? Like all that good. It's like you can't make that much good out of that, right? Right. I, I think it's so. like the omen or something like that. Like two good people and they have the birth of Satan. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's... Uh, Who's the Marvel villain, um, M- M- Morpheus? Um, uh, uh, Mephisto. Mephisto, thank you. Yeah. Mephisto. Ooh. I bet you he's the son of someone else. But I'm- Mr. Mephistopheles. Ah, ah, ah. Um, it was Mongo, Jerry, and Rumble Teaser. That was from Cats, the musical. But I'm, there's another one, Mr. Mephistopheles. What is that from again? That's uh, Saturday Night Live. That was uh, John Lovitz. Mm. Oh, yeah, pretty. yeah, John Lovitz, yeah, yeah, that's the ticket, that's it, right? that's right, that's me, yeah. How you doing, Danny? Oh, you know, great, it's Monday. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's, but it's like a weekend for you almost. Kind of, yeah. yes. We gotta get into that though, it's kind of like a weekend, because sure. it's um, funky schedule ass stuff for you, man, it's... Hence, uh, the show is always on a weird schedule when we record, and but we release, we release it on a consistent basis. That's all this that matters. All, this is all true. We've never missed an episode, ladies and gentlemen, here on A Brew With You. 61 episodes strong. I missed one. Danny missed like a couple tops, but the show always continues. Yes, just like the Justice League theme song. <laughs> that was a little bit later. I remember, like, we really grew up, you know, there was like, we had like three different small time periods of TV shows. And I remember, you know, back in the good old days, the golden days, we had the Thundercats and we had uh, Master of the Universe, Transformers, G.I. Joe, right? Yep. And then a little bit later, we had uh, the Ghostbusters. And we had, um, well, Ghostbusters was the early one, but I'm talking about the cartoon was later in the late yeah. 90s. And then we had Ninja Turtles, um, and then an X-Men, yep. and uh, Batman. Well, X-Men, Batman, and Spider-Man were all kind of like <clears throat> around the same time, right? Yeah, I think like Ninja Turtles started it, and then the cap was like Batman, like that gap. Because right. it was late, late 80s, they to early 90s. slowly but there. steadily kind of got more serious, like more from little kid cartoons to like uh, older kid cartoons. Yeah, X Men and Batman definitely were the epitome of that. Yeah, and then a little after that, we had our Justice Leagues. Yes, and uh, Pokemon's and um, we are we are we are. That's three episodes straight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm singing the VR Trooper theme song. That's right. And I only watched like three episodes of that show, mainly because um, both my parents worked growing up, so I had to stay over at other p- friends' houses a lot. Yeah. And my friend Danny, not you, Danny, different Danny. You're a really good friend. The other Danny was not a really good friend. And I had to stay at his house anyway after school. And he liked watching VR Troopers. And I was like, that show's stupid. You want, want at least watch Power Rangers. And he's like, no. He wants to be different and all this stuff. And he knew it was a bad show, but he watched it anyway. He just wanted to be different, Danny. He just yeah. was defying logic. And he just wanted wanted to be that... that. You wanted to disagree just for the sake of disagreeing. Sure. Um, I mean... If you're going to find those people throughout life, it's not uncommon. You just got to remember that they're wrong. <laughs> we just had an election. That's all I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen. We just Hey-o. had an election. hey For any of you joining us for the very first time, a brew with you is where Danny and I will try a beer we've never had before while discussing random topics broken out Tuesday through Thursday on YouTube with the entire episode being released on Friday. TGIF. If you like what you hear, like what you see, like what you feel, go to patreon.com slash big deal to get this entire episode a week early along with your extra rewards and perks. Better Today, I brought the beer. So, Danny, where are we drinking? 
Ooh. You know what? I was thinking about this oh. long and hard. And she said, hi oh. Um, we've already kind of started dwelling into holiday things. Uh, I myself personally am kind of anti anything Christmas with the exception of Great Lakes Christmas sale pre Thanksgiving. Ah, okay. I, was, I, I, I see where you're going with that. Okay. Got okay. it. So pre another holiday. Pre another holiday. I like to, I like to have my holidays before the other holidays start getting washed over. This on is me. What, you know, cause Danny likes dressing up like pilgrims in the, uh, in, yes. in November. So Definitely. that's why he, he's Definitely. like, don't be dressed up like elves around me when I'm a pilgrim. It doesn't make but, sense. Okay. But to, to totally stray away from holidays, uh, since in our last episode we were holiday themed, uh, and to break it up before we start really getting into all the Christmas themes, this is a good segue because my beer is does the same thing. Because I know that that's going to happen. Yeah, uh, and because you know we're kind of in the peak of football season. Football. I was wondering if we could drink on football. It's about a nice game of football. Now we had um on the on the the meathead cast we did football already just to let you know mm. but you weren't there for that true so i think we'll just take a different angle of football okay. for that but i think but it's you and i it's a different show and a different it's not the meathead cast so we'll talk but it is football season it's like it feels more appropriate because we did football at the beginning of football season or like in august september so Maybe we'll have football. No. <laughs> no, we'll do football. Uh, just uh, some different imagery and whatnot. And it's this is actually like, pri- this is football weather. This is football season. Like, this is not like so, summer football weather. All right. So let's do this then. How about in honor of Rob Kelly, uh, fantasy pickup <laughs> of the week, absolutely destroying Green Bay. Hey, uh, why don't we do best running backs? Oh, running backs. Okay. We've got to break it down. Okay. Yeah. So run, so run forest run on three. <laughs> uh, we can do run for us run. He was a, well, yeah. no, he wasn't a running back. He was a kickoff return specialist, but yeah. we can do that. We'll just say run for us run. Sure. I like it. On the count of three. One, two, three. Run, run for us run. run. Who got uh, maybe some Walt Payton? Oh, definitely. Jim Brown. Emmett Smith. Mm, some of the greats. Rob Kelly, for uh, who I rode on my bench, <laughs> but uh, got 30 points on my bench. But I don't know if it would have made a difference if I still would have won this week because it was rough. Week. Yeah, Honor, I mean he's got to get an honorable mention now. I mean he kind of already did. But yeah, man. Uh, Barry Sanders, of course. Got to be, oh, one of my all-time arguably the greatest as a kid. running back of all time, man. Yeah, a lot of people would argue he's the greatest running back of all time. Even though some, you know, Emmitt's leading rusher, Jim Brown, had the best yardage in the short amount of time. Who knows, man? It's always it's never you can never prove it, man. It's just a an argument that will never go away. It's hard to find somebody that is a human pinball like Barry Sanders was, though. Well, I think he was not. Well, yeah, I can see what you're saying about pinball. Yeah, I think he was also an elusive guy. Like he would run and then just be like, I could turn all my momentum I took for own and then shift and then continue that momentum. Like he could just stop time for a minute and hold on to that momentum and then just shift it. You yeah, know what I mean, he was borderline superhuman. That is true. <laughs> okay, so today, Danny, I um, you know, I'm all about variety. I'm all about, uh, you know, trying stuff we haven't tried before. And we recently realized, like in the past month, Danny, that we um, have tried two breweries that were really well known. Victory Brewing being one of them. Sure. Um, the other one, I'm, I'm, guys, it's going to be one of those podcasts. I'm going to be very crappy minded today. It goes along with my topic. But uh, Victory Brewing was the, the I know was one that we haven't we we tasted. I'm like, wow, how have we not had a Victory Brewing ever on this show before in 60 episodes? Um, at the time of 60 episodes. Um, there was one or two more, more like, wow, I'm surprised we never had this. So this one, we are doing Leinen Kugels. Um, you know, Leinen Kugels, really staple beer is their summer shandy. It is not summer, and <laughs> I don't want that right now because I'm actually not a big fan of that beer. Um, and to be 100% honest, we're always honest on the show. I'm not a big fan of Leinen Kugels in general. I'm not uh, blown away by a lot of their beers, but again, we try variety and who knows, maybe they have a beer that comes out and like, whoa, looks like they're, they're back. Uh, they got something that I could uh, look forward to. Right. So they got a seasonal beer here called Bavarian Dunkel. And the reason why I got it, because it feels like it's looks, it, the, the description, the look feels like it's a fall dash winter beer. It, it, it feels like, cause right now we're in the Midwest. It's Chicago for any of you who are listeners or fans Away from the uh, chilly Midwest, um, it is cold. It is starting to go. We had a good long run of warm weather, but now it is officially cold. We're in the 30s now, and that's probably going to be like that for the next three, four months, four yep. months at least. So my heat is officially on. It is, and the heat is on. 
the heat, heat is, is on. on. Um, this beer, Glenn Frey. That's an awesome song. By it the way. is. It is not like the Justice League theme song though. <laughs> um, so this beer came off like the description, the look, the, the 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 timing feels like it's this transition beer, very similar to your your topic where you're saying we're we're in that transition period of the sports in right. November, December. So. Um, I feel this is a good like end of fall, beginning of winter beer. I mean, I don't know what it tastes like, but that's my impression of it. So we got Bavarian Dunkel from Leinenkugel's right up here in the Midwest as well in Wisconsin. It's a Munich Dunkel Lager, uh, 5.5 ABV. Oh, that's pretty high for Leinenkugel, I feel. 5.5? Um... Well, I, I mean, don't know. You I, can, can, you I have nothing you to compare really, it to. You can't really compare it to a shandy because shandies are traditionally going to be very low alcohol content beers. All right. Well, this new, well, it's technically a winter beer from the description, but even though I didn't, I looked at this beer online and couldn't find it on their website. Um, so I found it from a different website. This new winter um, from Lee's, uh, abbreviated, Lini's. Uh, is Bavarian Dunkel. This Bavarian uh, style Dunkel is brewed with pale Munich caramel and dark chocolate malt. It has notes of cocoa, toasted malt, and mild winter spices are balanced with hints of berries for a rich taste and a clean finish. The medium body and malt forward flavor make it a perfect pairing for hearty and savory foods. We are not eating right now because this is a podcast, but we can have a little sip into to wet the whistle while the other person is talking. Sure. So, um... <clears throat> You ready to give uh, Lining Kugels a chance here because we never had one on the show and, you know, we don't have the best uh, history with Lining, but hey, let's see if we get a savory moment here, huh? Yeah, I mean, their their flagship, uh, I don't even I don't even know what it's called. Is it just, just Lining Kugels? Yeah. Like, just their flagship beer? It's called Original, I believe. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think that's what it is, yeah. Um, my roommate, Pat, in college used to love that beer. He used to buy it all the time, so. Okay. Mm I mean, in college, that seemed like a fancy thing at the time. Yeah, I drank uh, Bud, and that was fancy, believe it or not. Right. So, now, far gone from college, uh, Lining Kugels, to me, just, it's one of those breweries that puts out a lot of gimmicks, uh, mm. specifically their Shandy line. Their Shandy line gets kind of nutty. Um like there's the cranberry ginger shandy that comes out during the winter. Do you and mean nutty like, like nitty, nutty like crazy cuckoo nutty or nutty like it tastes it like nuts? No, crazy cuckoo nutty. Ah, just woo-hoo. like there's there's too many there's too many variations that are just weird. It's like it's, I agree. It's like Blue Moon coming out with seven different variations of a wit beer that you know like how many different types of oranges are there, people? Not even that, but like there's the cinnamon horchata Blue Moon, and it's just like why why is that a thing? Cinnamon um, orchata, I love those, but not in a beer. I don't know about. I try it. Maybe, I guess. maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll try it on the show. We never had Blue Moon on the show. Is Blue Moon its own brewery? Right, Blue Moon's its own thing. Uh, I think that it's AB and Bev. It might oh. be Miller Coors. It's but it's still its own brewery. Though. It's like yeah. Blue Moon's their own. It's like its own. They just. It's not like. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, hold on. It's it's one of those that I mean, you, you could you could call it a brewery per se, but it's just owned by a parent company that brews it. Gotcha. Um, Blue Moon definitely has a couple um, uh, variations outside their their standard of Blue Moon that are okay though. I, there, there's several that are okay. We we haven't, again we haven't had a Blue Moon on this show though, so we should. Uh, you know, that's the thing too. Another reason I got this, Danny, is because remember we had the, one of my favorite episodes we did was when we were defending Sam Adams. Yeah. Um, and remember how like a lot of beer enthusiasts and snobs were like, oh, Sam Adams isn't uh, really a brewery and it, it's so widespread. And like you and I defend Sam Adams because like it was the, one of the starts, if not the father of this craft brewery boom. And just because it's big doesn't mean it's not a craft brewery anymore. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's preposterous to think that. So I feel kind of way, way about Lining Cools. They're a very popular brand and they're very widespread, but it's still, it's, it's, it's it's their own thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, we we'll get a give a shot. Bavarian Dunkel. Why not? Oop. Nostrovia. Cheers. Nostrovia. Mm. Let's see what happens. Ah. Oh. That's enjoyable. I'm. I'm that's not. That's that's that's. Ooh. Not bad, Lonnie Kugels. Lonnie Kugels. Um. Uh, they're always my impression. Always Lonnie Kugels is it's a very it's a lighter beer. Um, it's not a uh, full body. It's not really heavy. Uh, this is no exception. This is not a very full body heavy beer at all, but no, it's, it's definitely, definitely light. Yeah. But it's, it's not jam packed with like fruit. I feel, you know what I mean? There is a, some essence of fruit in here because that's kind of like their staple, but I'm not getting hit over the head with like lemons and berries and, and strawberries and whatnot. 
No, I think the 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 side of the bottle says hints of berries. Yeah, you can taste a little but it's sweetness. Not, it's not like their berry Weiss beer, which is just like Kool Aid. Yeah, it's like alcoholic Kool Aid. It's like why is this is this even a beer anymore? Yeah. I, I, that's a big thing with Line of Kugels is that it, it's like I, it, you know the whole old the old joke the man card thing. No, put fruit in your beer and berries in your beer and all that stuff. That's why I always was like eh, Line of Kugels. But um, a lot of people like Summer Shandy. This is okay. I'm, I mean, my first impression is this is okay. I'm not, um, this is, a, this is all right. This is a beer. I just like, come on. This is not a, yeah. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a chance, but, mm. <laughs> um, off the bat to me, it's just missing something, but I'm going to continue drinking it. We'll see what happens. Mine might change throughout the show. At the end of every show, ladies and gentlemen, we rate the beer on a scale of one to 10. So stay tuned to the end of the episode to give us official rating of Landon Kugel's Bavarian Dunkel. Danny. Blake. Um, I'm debating whether to fix some facts or talk about your, your weekend right now. What do you think? What's your uh, instinct? Do you think your story should go before your topic or should it, um, yeah, it should go before the topic. Okay. So let's fix some facts and air some errors. Uh, episode 60, we had a few things to go over. Sonny and Cher in the intro of the show, we were discussing whether or not they were 60s or 70s, both, but their peak popularity was in the mid-60s. Ah. Uh, that's when I Got You, Babe was released. I Got You, Babe. Uh, episode where Fulton Blend appeared was actually the pilot episode, because uh, we were drinking Goose Island's Experiment, uh, and prior to Goose Island's Experiment, we actually had the original Get release out, really? of Fulton Street Coffee. Yeah, Club. that's when I um, bought a case for Danny. I'll always forget this. It was at his old place. May it rest in peace. In pieces. Um... It's a new home now. Yeah, yeah I hope they. It's haunted. Um, <laughs> I, I remember I picked up the beer for the show, and you asked me to pick up uh, if they had any left because it was a very hot item. Uh, if they had any six packs of the Fulton Street Blended, and they had one left, and I picked it up for you. And as I was pulling it out of the car, a bottle fell out and smashed, and I was so mad because I was doing a favor for you and I was helping you out. And I, it was like a, <laughs> and I felt so bad. But I said, don't pay me the money because I was a clumsy son of a bitch. We poured one out for Jansen. We did. Um, we That's talked what about, it was, yeah. talked about the movie The Arrival, uh, the new one with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. Great reviews, by the way. Right. And I told you that when I pulled it up, because it was a potential that I was going to go see it, the first thing that came up on IMDb was a 1996 Charlie Sheen movie, The Arrival. Right. Uh, I didn't know this, and I just kind of looked into it for fun. But The Arrival... Arrival is the title of the current movie. The Arrival is the title of the Charlie Sheen movie. You can see why I got mixed up. The Arrival and Arrival. Arrival. Got right. it. Uh, however, The Arrival is from 1996 starring Charlie Sheen, also a movie about discovering alien life and its potential threats to the human race. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fun. So I found that kind of, that was quite the coincidence. Remember the Charlie Sheen one? Do you ever see that movie? <clears throat> No. Well, it's really interesting that it's like a, it's kind of like an invasion of the body snatchers sort of thing where the aliens are taking over Earth slowly and they're taking the, the form of humans. I watched I watched the trailer for it and it was just so great because it was like the old school trailer when yeah. it's like and the only one who knows are the ones that are already here and it was like the trailer voice Ooh. guy and it was so great. Oh, I should watch that. We should uh, yeah. we should review that one for the preamble. Yeah. Oh, that's really should totally do that. Um, in, in honor of uh, arrival being right. theater. Perhaps you can do both in the same episode. Ooh. I mean, uh, yeah. Actually, that's a really good idea. Maybe there we you should. Go. Um, but I remember that movie, the aliens. In that, the big thing about their aliens is they the the most distinct feature is their legs, where are their knees bent invertedly, so they walked like it was like, what's crazy about these aliens? Oh, their knees bend the other way, so they would like, hop, like kind of like this walk hop. Sort of thing. That was the big reveal. <laughs> the old walk hop. Yeah. As well, even walk. Yeah. Heard um, it here first. Charlie Sheen, uh, though, had a goatee in that movie in glasses. Yeah. Different look for him. And Not was, wild thing. He was he, uh, he was definitely heavier in that movie as well. Ah. Uh, it's the Coke. A Jedi is never late. Quote Gandalf definitely says it. A wizard is never late. Uh, I swore that Qui Gon said this, but despite my best efforts, I could not, without actually like watching. The entire run of Phantom Menace, which oh, I, did, God. I, just, I didn't have time to do. You're going to need more of these little babies yeah. right here. I was um, holding the I couldn't find any confirmation that he said it. I swore that he said something like that. Maybe I just read it somewhere where somebody just made their own edit. You know, mm -hmm. like a Jedi is never late and they just put Jedi in place of wizard. 
I don't know. But Gandalf, definitely, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was I know those token. books, too. He, he says and in the books, too. I just couldn't find confirmation on whether or not a Jedi said it. Hmm. Uh, last but not least, also regarding the Jedi, the quote about being mindful of the future, the full quote is, Obi-Wan says, but Master Yoda said to be mindful of the future. And Qui-Gon responds with, but not at the cost of the moment. Not at the cost? Not at the expense of the moment. At the expense yes. of the moment. Oh, those... Samurai space warriors. I should call them that for now instead of Jedi's. Yeah. You gonna see the new Star Wars movie, Dan? Oh, Rogue One? Absolutely. Yeah. That's uh we're supposed to get the trailer for Homecoming with Rogue One. What do you mean? Spider Man. Wait. What? Oh, you mean we're gonna get the Spider Man trailer? I see what you're saying. I I, I know what you're saying. Okay, yeah. I, I just was woohoo. No, I know what you're saying now. So we're gonna get the Spider Man trailer. Yeah, for when we're in Rogue One, oh, that's exciting. Yeah, when Rogue One, uh, it's the home. The first trailer for Homecoming is supposed to be tied to Rogue One. Yeah, it's kind of a good, interesting combo that Disney's got right now because they can put out a Marvel movie and promote their Star Wars movie and vice versa. Now, yep, all that blockbuster hype, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. I'm sorry, but um, I'm really liking South Park right now because they're making fun of the uh, last Star Wars movie and they're saying like, as much as hard as it is to accept it. The last Star Wars movie was not that good. And it was this like whole thing about like nostalgia kind of tied into last week's topic. Yep. And how like we're all like tied into the past and we are obsessed with the past and we see all these movies we see now and we like them more because it has that nostalgia factor. It's just like it's the same thing, but just a little bit different, so it's new. Except for that whole new Cantina scene. I thought that was terrible. In Star Wars... Uh, the last one? Yeah, in The Force, the Force Awakens. Awakens. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah. Too the, much CGI in that movie. And that's right. what um, the, um, the, the problem is. The grandma alien who was like psychic or whatever that had the giant glasses. Sure. Whoever, just, just yeah. Random, I just, uh, and then, you know, the girl uh, all of a sudden, like the Force speaks to her. And then all of a sudden she's got Luke's lightsaber, which how did Luke's lightsaber get there? And it's just like, what? What, what just happened? I, 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 I'm just, I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm not. I just like good movies, and I don't think Force Awakens was a good movie. Um, I, I think, you know, at the time, it's like, oh, we got a Star Wars movie in theaters, blah, 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 and lasers. I and think I Rogue remember, One is going to be a lot better, to be honest I, with you. I, I'm actually more excited for it, because yeah. it's not like, it, it's a prequel to something that we really know in a long time ago. It's not trying to create all this new stuff where it's just like, we'll see what happens. I don't know, because I'm not... You know, a big Star Wars geek, and you know that. I like my Star Wars, but um, I, I think the reason why I was like really getting into the geekness, like when I was, um, you know, like Tina, when the, the episodes one, two, and three came out, and then it really just died fast. I'm like, I, I, it's just I haven't seen this stuff in a while. 